On today's episode, we are going to talk about battling perfectionism. We're going to talk about making killer lists and we're going to talk about your first venture online. Cool. Well, episode, why am I so bad at this? 18. 18. Yeah. What would I do without you, Danny? Yeah. Episode 18. We've got a few topics today. We're going to move through them pretty quickly because um, I want to get to jiu-jitsu. I uh, leave for Puerto Rico today. Um, and I'll be gone for a week. Speaking of which, office hours probably won't happen this week. Mind you, you'll probably watch this after office hours anyway, so that really doesn't uh, matter anyways. Still gonna try and get a few things done. Gonna try and get a couple of other, other videos done before I leave, but uh, beyond that, I will be pretty much offline for about a week. Danny, do you wanna, you wanna go ahead and jump into the first question and just get it done? This is a question from you, so I want you to uh, elaborate on it a little bit sure, if, yeah. uh, if, if you're cool with that. Tell us why you came yeah. up with the, the question. So the question is, can you go over how to deal with perfectionism? I've always been a, been a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I never like to make mistakes, so it's always hard to, you know, let things be with business and with life. I just want to find out what your take is on that. Like, how, if you've ever encountered perfectionism in, in your in your life, how do you deal with it with business, like relationships? So it's not just specific to um, to your business. It's it's. Yeah. Is it like is it like OCD level perfectionism or is it just like I, I want so. it to be the I best possible like, and it's kind of like analysis sure, paralysis like, type thing. For instance, it's hard to take criticism. Yeah. You know, and it's hard. Being a creative, I'm sure. Yeah. That, that it makes is. it even tougher because yeah. it's like you pour your like heart and soul yeah. and and not to mention you you know the the time and the sweat and the yeah yeah and a big one is just fearing failure mm -hmm. and I feel like with business that shouldn't matter mm -hmm. because you'll fail a lot in business yes and so it's hard for me to take that leap you know to handle that I think that's my biggest question well, I think um, there's there's a couple of schools of thought on the failure thing um, people say fail fast and fail often and then there are another sort of school of thinkers that say um, what are you doing embracing failure do better essentially and I'm probably kind of doing a, a crap job of explaining that second one, but essentially, like there, there, there seems to be this culture around um, around failing um, and being good at failing and failing lots. And and the other school of thinkers say, well, you know, why, why you don't have to fail? You can just do a really good job. My perspective is I, I am I am a little bit OCD about things, but it, it's more non-business related things. So things in my in my day to day life, just a good example would be my desk at home, like my work desk. Uh, if there are cords sticking out or anything like that, I can't work. Like it just drives me absolutely insane. But um, as far as work is concerned, I think I think it's pretty well understood. There's no such thing as as perfect. I think we can try to we can try to get close. I think it's also important to understand that to whom is it perfect, right? It's not the product isn't necessarily for yourself whatever it is that you're you're creating for someone it's you're creating it for someone and they may not necessarily have the expectation of a perfectionism they like everyone else may understand that there's not something called perfect and so perhaps what you need to do Danny is just be a little bit more realistic both in your personal expectations but also in the expectations or the the expectations that you you give people, um, for example, a client. You, you, I'm sure you've heard that um, that saying, um, "Under promise, over deliver" kind of thing. Have you ever heard that? It's kind of like where you go in with something super realistic, knowing full well you are going to smash all that to pieces and do a way better job than what right. they had kind of expected. Right. So they get this very they have this very realistic quote or um, whatever, and they're very happy with that. And that, but but knowing. Uh, you knowing that this is the bare minimum that you can provide and you're going to smash that to pieces and do way better and they're going to leave so stoked. In their mind, it's going to be perfect. And while I think we need to make ourselves happy, at the end of the day, it's if, if it's always about making yourself happy, being you being happy with the product despite what the customer thinks, you'll never be happy. You'll constantly, uh, your projects will be late and then and then it's not only going to be you unhappy, it's going to be the client unhappy too. So you kind of have to pick sides a little bit. 
what I find um, it's a little bit of a dichotomy is I want to deliver as good as possible, but I also want to ship as quickly as possible as well. So I, I, I can't, I can't have both. I have to pick one, and the one that I tend to pick is um, shipping quickly. So getting something to market or um, getting something in a customer's or prospective customer's hand as quickly as possible so that then they can critique. Because you, you may spend all this time, and this, this was something that I was reading about in the book Sprint, you may spend all this time making something perfect, thinking it's perfect right? But it's perfect for you. It's perfect for your team. But what about the customer? Did you ask the right questions uh, from the customer? Ship something quick, get it in their hands right away and start asking the right questions. And you'll get to perfect a hell of a lot quicker if you just sort of use your own assumptions and try to reach that perfection. So there is a bit of a dichotomy, but I think, um, I think the way that I reconcile that is I just, I know that I I don't know what's best. The customer knows what's best. So I, I, I focus on the customer. I don't worry too much about myself. I focus on um, who's going to be paying, um, paying my bills, essentially. And, and that's good enough for me. Because otherwise, um, I, I, just, I, I won't end up delivering anything. And when I do, it may not even be any good. And how's that going to feel for me? I'd rather work with the customer and, and get it as close to perfect for them as possible. And that's where I'm going to get happiness. Does that, that make a little bit of sense? It does actually. Yeah. Because then it takes the pressure off me. <clears throat> Focus on someone focus. else. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know? With, and that doesn't have to be exclusively to business. That could be a, a girlfriend. Focus on them. And, and, and generally speaking, I've found if you focus on, um, don't forget about yourself, but focus a little bit more on them, you'll end up being happy because they're happy. You know, in part anyway. So, um, love it. Let's move yeah. on. Great. Cool. Thanks for answering, asking yeah, that question. Absolutely. I like it. Uh, you talk a lot about making lists. How should I make a daily task list? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so this comes from a team member who's who's struggling with his sort of um, day-to-day list. And the way I've done it is I've set up a basic, the way I had been doing it is that I set up a scrum board. Um, and if you haven't read the book, Scrum, um, do twice the amount in half the time, something like that. Uh, then you should, you must, in fact. And what I do is I, in Trello, I set up different columns and I move things from left to right as, um, as the Scrum methodology or framework goes. But what I did a little bit differently is, I, what I've now done a little bit differently is I read this book called Eat That Frog. And I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still halfway through it, so I may be missing some things, of course, but basically the way they suggest setting up a Trello board is one, share it with somebody. So I've shared mine um, w- with, uh, with a buddy who I'm now sort of accountable to. So if he starts to see me slacking, me stop being consistent, me moving less items every single day or me adding less items or uh, me adding the wrong items or anything like that, hell, even if he's not looking in the back of my mind, I think he's looking. And there are probably days he doesn't look, but in my back of my mind, I'm thinking he's looking. So I have to be very, um, not only disciplined to myself, but also disciplined to him or accountable to him, uh, which is really helpful. And so what I, basically what I do is I break it down into columns. I have my master column, which is kind of like product backlog as far like, you know, if we want to compare it to Scrum. And that's just like, that's, that's anything. That could be stuff I want to work on in 11 months. But it's just, I, I, do, I, I don't want it to leave my mind. I, want, I need to put pen to paper, I need to put it somewhere else because otherwise if it, if it comes in, it's gonna go straight out and I'm gonna forget it. So I put that in master. Um, and then I have a monthly column, then I have a weekly column and a daily column and a QA column and a, and a, D, a done column. QA is for quality assurance or quality checking. And so things move from, right, from left to right essentially. And so, Basically what I will do is um, at the start of every month, so let's say November 30th, for example, what I did is I grabbed stuff from master that I wanted to work on in December and I dragged that over to monthly, into the monthly column. So they're tasks. If you're familiar with Trello, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, um, go check it out. It's freaking awesome. And so now I've got sort of, this is what I'm gonna work on in the month. And then let's just say it's Sunday. Let's just say the 30th is a Sunday, right? 
30th of November is a Sunday. So on that Sunday, now I'm planning what my next week is going to look like. And this is important. This is critical. You have to plan. They say that for every 10 minutes of planning you do, you can save t uh, up to like two hours of actual execution the next day. So you absolutely must plan the day before. And lists are a great way to doing that. So um, then, so from my monthly list on that Sunday, I'm going to drag whatever I'm going to do next week. So from Monday to the next Sunday or let's say Monday to Friday or whatever. And then the day before, uh, the day before, and I guess this could be Sunday again, it, it doesn't matter. It could be Monday um, and I'm dragging it in for Tuesday or Tuesday dragging it in for Wednesday. Uh, I'm then going to grab stuff from weekly and I'm going to drag that into uh, the daily column. And now all I have to do essentially is prioritize. And what I, what the book Eat That Frog suggests that I do is prioritize it by the biggest and ugliest frog first. And what they mean by that is they want you to put the most difficult, the most nasty, the most ugly, the most time consuming, the most um, thought, uh, th um, thought consuming task first because it is understood that that task, the one that you are avoiding, the one that you are procrastinating is the one that is gonna be the most impactful on your day. So drag that one um, up to the very top of that list and then just basically prioritize uh, from largest, ugliest frog to smallest frogs. And, and you'll find at the bottom of your list, you start looking at some of these smaller frogs, which are tasks essentially, um, there may be you, you, sort of the next step is 80-20 rule. Which ones are going to provide me, um, uh, which ones are going to provide me essentially with the most value? And if they're not going to provide me with value, do I really need to be doing them? And that's what that person's meant to do. That's why that person's watching my board is he's going to identify those small frogs too. And so if I'm thinking that he's looking, then I'm going to go ahead and eliminate those on my own. I'm going to say, you know what? I don't need to be doing that, period. No one needs to be doing that because that's going to deliver no value. It's not going to deliver any value to me. It's not going to deliver any value to my team or my family. And so let's just scratch that entirely. Or there is some value there. Let's outsource that. Let's give that to another team team member. I don't need to be doing that because that's not going to um, uh, provide value to the bigger picture. That's not going to get me where I need to be in two, three, five, ten years. And you need to be thinking like that. That's what this planning is for, right? If, if you plan ahead, you save time in the future and the more likely you will be to get where it is that you want to go. No short-term planning. You gotta short, you gotta plan ahead and that's the way it works. That's how you save time and that's how you get where you want to go. So that's how I do lists. Um, I, I, I would check out Trello. I would, I would check out Eat That Frog and, um, and I would just get disciplined. I would find somebody to help you get disciplined. Uh, even, if, even if you don't need help being disciplined, I would find somebody because it's, we're just human. It's just, it's just sometimes you need a little bit of help. You need somebody to be accountable. It's like having somebody waiting for you at the gym, like a personal trainer. You're going to show up because you don't want to be an asshole. So, um, find that person that you're going to, that you respect enough that if you don't do something, you're going to feel like an asshole or a jerk or whatever. So let's get you up. Okay. Next one is a writer writes, my husband runs a plumbing company, doesn't have a website, but would like to start marketing on the web. What are his first steps? Yeah, this was a cool question. I like this one because this one came from a, um, a, an old friend. So I, I got a little bit more context because we actually had a, a conversation already. He's already running a plumbing company. He, you know, so it's uh, word of mouth kind of stuff um, right now, but he wants to get on the web and he's not a tech savvy guy um, and he doesn't want to spend a lot of money, obviously. Um, so what I suggested is Wix or Squarespace. I've worked with both a little bit. Um, I find Squarespace to be a little bit better than Wix. Uh, from an SEO standpoint, Danny gives a thumbs up for Squarespace. Why do you like it better? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just prefer it over Wix, because yeah. Wix, I find, is not that good. Is it just limited in what it can yeah, do? Limited in templates, yeah. limited in functionality? Yeah. Squarespace, I mean, well, ideally, I would prefer WordPress, Yeah. but you have to learn a lot just to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squarespace is a little more streamlined. It's pretty easy to get. Is that what you use? I don't use it, but uh, I think I would like to use it. I, gotcha. I have my own website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was coded. Yeah. But I think if I was to do it again, I'd probably do Squarespace. Makes sense. I've, I've played with it a little bit, and I know um, our devs speak pretty highly of it, at least relative to other things like it. 
Um, so that would be the first thing. It's low cost. I, I, I don't remember exactly how much a month it costs. I would like to say like 20 bucks, something like that. That's not right. It was like eight to ten dollars. Okay, so super, yeah. super cheap. You can build a website, right? Like it, it's it's not hard. And that's, I, hell, that's how I built my first. Not with Squarespace, but with something um, much crappier. <laughs> you know, Squarespace is, spare space is awesome. What I used was, was total shit. But I, I spent the time and I made a website and I didn't spend the money on, well, I didn't have the money in the first place. So you, it can be done. Start there, figure it out, get the content, get, get your content online, tell people why they should, um, should use you, get some testimonials, all that kind of stuff. That would be my first step. That's what I would spend, you know, spend a couple weeks on it, you know, a few hours a night kind of thing and eventually you'll get there. Um, pro easily the most important thing you can do. Second thing that I would do is um, is Google favors local. So y we have to understand that this is Google's playground. It's their rules, we have to play by their rules. And so if we want to be a part of their playground, then we need to understand what those rules are. And one, um, one rule would suggest, or part of their algorithm I suppose would suggest, that it's a good thing to be, um, it's a good thing to have an address if you're a local business, because it ma makes you look real, and it uh, enables you to participate in Google My Business, which is like that sort of Google local, it's those star things that you'll see when you, when you search something like, you know, let's just say Plumbing Vancouver or something like that, right? So you gotta get in there. So, you know, you could be a co-working spot, so a place that you go into, um, like the one that we're in, the, the network hub, um, that you go into and just get, you know, get, get out of the house, get work done kind of thing. It could be uh, a crappy little warehouse. It could be your own home. It doesn't matter. You just need to be able to, um, you know, uh, you, you, you need to actually be there. That's one of Google's rules. And I think you need to be able to take meetings or something like that there, right? See customers there essentially, right? Um, get an address, get a Google My Business page. And that, that I would say that's, that's step two. The next thing is the next thing I would say is probably citation building and link building. Citation being citations generally being you know get in Yelp super pages and yellow pages and white pages and local.com and 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 um, Angie's list and Judy's book and I mean you just search online um, a citation list or local business directory submission list. You'll find a, a million and one lists. Take five per week or five per day and submit uh, your business, your, your name, address, phone number, business description, five per day. It'll take you, I don't know, two, three minutes per. So uh, you do it just before you go to bed or something like that. Do five per day and you know, by the end of the month, you'll have as many as you pretty much want to have, period. And then the next thing that I would focus on is links. As I mentioned, um, you know somebody with a website. Like generally speaking, people know somebody with a website. It might be a supplier, it might be a vendor, it may be a friend, it may be um, somebody you know that has a website and they're looking for a testimonial. Maybe you use their services once upon a time, could be years ago, you ask them, hey, um, really liked your services, do you want a testimonial in exchange for a link back from that testimonial to my website? Try and get two, three per week kind of thing. And if you can just do that, you're going places already. If you can just create a website, get on Google My Business with an address, and start creating links and citations, that's that's what you're going to pay an, uh, a search engine optimization expert for, essentially. I mean, they might be able to do it a little bit better. They'll be able to do it at scale, um, and they'll probably be able to do it a little bit faster. But if you don't have the budget, what are you going to do? You're not going to sit on your ass and hope that if you build it, they'll come because they won't come. They generally will not come unless you are, um, you know, just a, an absolute business superstar and you have just the most amazing product. But plumbing is kind of plumbing. Like, honestly, I don't know what, what you're going to do to um, make plumbing more than plumbing, right? So just, just start putting in the time. Just an hour a day, two hours a day. That's all, that's all you really have to do to do all of those few things that I mentioned. And then if you have a little bit of time left over, start learning a little bit more about SEO. Um, MozMOZ.com has a lot of sort of beginner, ba you know, basic um, um, guides. Again, just, you know, spend 30 minutes a day reading those guides and start, you know, trying to apply those things as you go. Um, and, and, and with that, you don't have to hire a web designer, you don't have to hire a web developer, you don't have to hire uh, um, an SEO. Um, you, you, can, you can make slow gains just doing that, that's it.
So, and and let's let's um, let's let's wrap it up there because I like I said I got to go to jujitsu. So, um, very quickly, uh, I would love your questions. Um, thank you, Danny, again for your question. I appreciate it very much. Um, give me your questions. Twitter. Uh, Instagram, um, Danny, you'll post the links, um, ask it on YouTube, ask it on Facebook. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm there, I'm listening and I'm, I'd be stoked to, to answer them. Hell, even, even just send me an email, adam at magistrateinc.com. Be very happy to receive and reply same day and, uh, and help you out in whatever way I can. Um, other than that, um, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're listening to our podcast, subscribe and or leave a little testimonial or review there. That would be much appreciated. But otherwise, um, have a great week. This has been episode 8, was 18, 17? This is episode 18. 18. So we'll be at 20 in no time. Thank you everyone for your attention, for your time, and uh, have a phenomenal week. I'm 36.